we're going to be using data from our spreadsheet that's going to have several email addresses as well as some user names, creating a function that's going to select the content of the document and then create a doc in our drive, add some content into the doc, including the data that's coming from the spreadsheet. Also get the URL of the newly created doc, add that into the doc as well, where we're appending the paragraph. And then lastly, send an email to the user that's listed within the spreadsheet, linking out to the document. And this is all going to be done within the script where we're generating the documents. We're generating and sending out emails with those documents that can then be opened up and viewed within the browser. And they're going to include the message that we constructed within the app script, as well as a link to the document and all the information that we created the document from within the app script. Open up your Google spreadsheet with some data in it. Let's rename the sheet and we'll call the sheet as renaming the sheet and we'll just call it data. So this is the spreadsheet that's going to have our data within it. And that way we can select the specific spreadsheet and we know the structure of the spreadsheet that it's going to have four columns and within the first column is going to be first name, last name, ID, and then email address. Under the extensions, select app script. That's going to open up the app script editor, create a GS file and create a function called my data. And within the function, we want to select the spreadsheet named data and access the content from that spreadsheet. So even if the user is on a different sheet, we're still going to be looking at and retrieving the content from the data spreadsheet. So selecting the spreadsheet object using the spreadsheet app class, we're going to select the active spreadsheet object. And then for the sheet, use the get sheet by name and within the properties of the get sheet by name, specify the sheet value. In the log, let's log out the sheet object and just to make sure that we're getting the correct sheet and that way we're ready to get the data from that sheet. You can run the code. You should see within the log that we've got the sheet object. Now let's select the content that we want to use from the spreadsheet and let's get all of the rows of data. Select the sheet object, then get the data range, which is going to select all of the available content from the spreadsheet and chain together the get values, which will return back all of the rows of content. Specify within the log the rows that we want to use. Run the code and you should retrieve back the data that you currently have within the spreadsheet. We want to separate out the data from all of the rows where we can use the rows and the slice method selecting out all of the content after the first row. So not including the first row. So the first row is going to be where we're going to have the headings. So run the code again and that's going to retrieve back all of the content. Now that we are selecting the sheet by its name, it actually doesn't matter what sheet the user is on and it's not going to throw any errors. The function will always run the same way because we're selecting the sheet by its name of the data name. We're going to use the data that's contained within the spreadsheet and we'll create some documents from it. So creating a function and I'll just call it maker doc and within the maker doc, we'll pass in the data that we want to use in order to make the document. I'll give it a name of data and within the logger log, first we'll output the data that was passed in. And this way, what we'll do is as we loop through the data within the my data function, we can use for each and this will return back each row of data that we have and that information we're going to be sending over to the maker document for use when we're constructing the contents. So run the script and just make sure that we get each row of content. So now let's use the data in order to construct some content and we'll set up a doc name. And this is what we'll use in order to set the name of the document. And this will use the, and create the name for the document. So using the data with the index value of zero and using the index value for data of one is going to return back the person's name. 
the full name that we can use then for the document name. So run the code one more time. And we can use the name of the person as the document name that we're going to be creating. We can also return back. So as we loop through, we can get the index value. And this will count for the index value. And if we want to update the row where we've got the data, let's update the last column. And we'll just call it a heading of doc. And we can use the index now in order to create the row. So to get the row value, we'll take index and we're going to add two to it. Let's create and add in the row value into the doc name. So that's going to return back and we need to pass in the row value as well for the index. So try to run that one more time. So that's going to return back that Lawrence Svekis is in row number two, which it is. Jane Doe is row number three and John Doe is in row number four. Let's update the function. We'll, we'll return back some values. We'll turn back an object with a value for row, and that's going to be whatever the row value is, and a value for message, and we'll create a variable called message to host content that we want to return back. And I'll use let in case we want to change it. So for now, we'll just say hello. Or actually, what we can do is we'll get it to say the full name. So that's going to be retrieving back the message. So going back where we're making the doc, we get the response back. And from that response object that we've returned back, we can get the range that we want to update with the message that's coming from the returned value from the document maker. So the range that we want to update is going to be contained within a variable called update range. We're going to be updating contents within the sheet object. And within the sheet, we want to be able to select the range that we want to update. And the range is going to be coming back from the value of row. So it's going to be this value here. And then we need to specify which column we want to update. So we've got the row that we're getting dynamically going back into the spreadsheet. It's going to be column E. So it's going to be column number five. And that's the range that we want to update. And selecting that update range object. From there, we can set a value of that item in the range and that's going to be whatever value we retrieve back from the make doc function with the object name of val message. So run the code and try it out. And we see that we populate that last column. So if we run it once again, we populate the last column with the contents that is coming from the first two columns. And also we're updating that particular row as we're able to select the range. So now we're ready to create a doc where we can comment out the logger information. And we're going to create a document using the doc name. So creating a document object and using the document app class. It's got a method called create. And we need to specify the document name that we want to create. So we've already generated within this variable. And within the document, the contents that we want to add to the body of the document and I'll just call it body data. And this is going to be a string. So using whatever the doc name is, it'll say hello and welcome within the body. And we can also type your ID is, and then the value of the ID that's coming from data within the item with the index value of two. So that gives us a string value for the body. And now let's select the document object, get the body of the document object, We'll set it up into an object called body. And then within the body, we can append. So this actually has to be a method. So it needs the rounded brackets. And then within the body, we've got options to append a horizontal line, an image, list item, page break, paragraph, and table. So we're going to be selecting a paragraph. Within the parameters of the paragraph, it's expecting a string. And we've got that within the data body or the body data. We also want to retrieve back the URL and we can get the document get URL and that will return back the URL of where the document object is located. And within message, we'll add to message additional content and then whatever, wherever the document is located. So we'll add that into the body, which is going to be then posted within the spreadsheet. And we can also append more content to the body. 
So we'll append a paragraph, append the message to the paragraph as well. And now it looks like we're able to run. And by default, it's gonna be adding this document to the root within the drive. So going into the drive, right now I don't have any additional documents. Let's go back to the script. We're gonna run the script. We're gonna to have to accept permissions because we're interacting with the doc app. So run that, accept, go through the review permissions. Accepting the permissions to manage documents. This application has been installed. Looks like the script is able to complete running. Go back into the sheet. We can see this is the information that was added in column E where we've got the document name and then the location of it, for the URL of the document. Also going into the drive, we've got the three brand new documents that were just created, and this is all just generated using the script where we're making the doc. We'll go ahead and we'll update this a little bit further where once we've updated that value, we wanna send that document out in an email, and we have the email address already within the sheets. So set up the email address that we want to send the document to. That's gonna be located within the column number three with the index value of two. For the subject of the email, we're gonna just use the doc name and create a string value for that, that it's been created, the document name has been created. And then for the body of the document, for the email body, and then the location of where the document has been created. And that's contained within the URL variable. Using the mail app, we'll send the email to the email with the subject and then the email body. And you can also do an HTML email. This is gonna be a regular text email. And we'll send out the emails to the user. Once again, we're gonna to have to accept permissions in order to send the email, clear the contents from your spreadsheet of the doc, and just update this, that this should actually be, email should be in data three, and try to run that one more time. As it's not gonna run if there's an invalid email address. And let's see what we've got within the emails. So we've got the document and the link to the document that's been created for the user. Opening up the document, there's the content that we generated within the app script and the link to the document itself which is gonna be the same URL as the document that we're currently looking at. So now it's up to you, create your own version of this application and also create some docs on your drive and you're gonna be ready to move on to the next lesson.